the Bretts are like a, like wearing a baseball cap. They they they're information that you want to convey to other people. You often see men wearing tulip Bretts here, but some of them are so big they would have had to possibly fit in the cheeks. <laughs> I'm Patrick Saltonstall. I'm the curator at the Aleutic Museum. My name is Marnie Leist. I'm the registrar at the Aleutic Museum. When we studied them on Kodiak, we found that 1,500 years ago, they were mostly used to tell what family you were. So you'd find um, each village that you look at, when you look at the librettes from a site, you'd have like three or four different styles, and that's because there were probably three or four different families in that village. Um, they're made out of a variety of materials, everything from the local slate to ivory, antler, uh, kennel coal, wood. Right, you got the mouse right here, the brett's here. And you find regional groupings of these styles around the island. The south half of the island has different librette styles than the north half, and the north half shares with Kachemak Bay area, whereas this end shares with the Alaska Peninsula. And that's a kind of like macro, regional, you know, related families. And then we have a very deep V brow ridge that may even come over as far as this. Two eyes coming down to a mouth. And then below the mouth we have two librettes, one here and one here. I'm not too sure if it started out small. when people, Maybe it was a coming of age thing, you started smaller and got bigger. I mean, I do know that just simply as we age, our skin loosens, you, you have to keep wearing bigger librettes. And then when you looked at an individual site, when I dug at Settlement Point, I found that each house had a different style of librette, and that's because each family had its own house. So librettes are very, very good at saying what family you are. There's various lutic styles, everything from a, what looks like a button to a librette that has concentric circles. And another thing that's cool about librettes, once you get rank society, once it went from Kachemak to Konya, so 500 years ago, the librettes get much bigger because they're also talking about status. So you still have the family styles, but then you get a couple that are really highly decorated with shark's teeth and paws, and, and they're much bigger. Um, definitely a status symbol. You know, some of the, the big librettes that I get to work with, you know, I can imagine an Alutic elder, you know, wearing this. I can imagine the stories that he would have told and I try to imagine the food that he would have eaten. I mean, this is something, it's very personal. It's, I mean, something that would have been in someone's mouth. So he's got a forehead, nose, there, eyes. He's got a mouth with his tongue sticking out with librettes. <laughs> it's like When you have librettes, it means you're having a beginning of formation of what we call corporate groups. You're beginning to see people identifying with certain families and groupings, sort of totems or whatever. Hear my librettes, hear me roar, you know, it's, it's a status symbol, for sure. The illusions they have in back 4,000 years. On Kodiak, I don't think we found librettes much beyond 2,500 though. We just haven't dug enough. I think if we dig enough 4,000 year old sites, we'll find them here too, because it seems like whatever happens in the Southeast and the illusions in Kodiak, it all happens at the same time. Except I did hear one story how you know, the Russians didn't want Alutics to wear librettes, but the women always felt very shy about taking theirs out, and they didn't like, they didn't want to be seen with them out. When you look at it in terms of develop, socio-political development, it all seems to happen synchronically, because what you're doing, what your neighbors are doing.